Okay, so uh, another question I have for you. So just for anybody watching who's not aware, there's a guy called Issa bin Mariam. He is the son of someone called Mariam or Mary. Um, he's, his birth is miraculous um, at the behest of an angel who appears and impregnates his mother or breathes into her. So the similarities between Jesus Christ and Issa are pointed at least, they're obvious. I've heard many Christians say, and Muslims also say, but we love Jesus. And my concern for them is that if they believe they have Jesus, the real Jesus, they don't need to get to know him through the Bible. Mm -hmm. They can believe they have a prophet who uh, they can adore and venerate. Um, so what would you say are the main differences, um, apart from inauthenticity, between Isa and Jesus Christ? Yeah. Great question, Kay. Thanks so much for, for offering it. Uh, real quickly, the Issa of the Bible, first and foremost, the Issa of the Bible spends his time, most of his time as a child, doing miracles, which are not recorded in my Bible. And so you can see that the Issa is really a, it, almost every one of these stories that you find in chapter 3 of the Quran and also in chapter 19 of the Quran, these stories where he's speaking from the cradle, uh, where he is telling his mother to bend down a palm tree in Surah 19 so that she can eat the fruit, telling his mother how to eat, where he is taking some mud and forming them into birds and then blowing on them and they fly up into the air in chapter 3, verse 49. These stories are not in our Bible, but we know exactly where they come from. These are for the lost books of the Bible. These are lost Arabic books of the Bible written in Syriac. And they would have been around in the area where, where the writers of the Quran were putting them together. That's why it's important that we look at the historical, and that's why you were saying we need to be careful about the historical Jesus. Uh, the historical Jesus is not Issa. That's the wrong Issa. But what's more, more, uh, more damaging is when he becomes an adult. In the Quran, once he becomes an adult, he starts denying his divinity, right, left, and center. And probably the places you need to go is chapter 5, Surah 5. When you look at Surah 5, you can see over and over again it attacks his divinity. Start with Surah 5, uh, uh, Ayah 72. For God has no partners. That's attacking the idea that Jesus could be the partner of God. Sure. Surah 5, yeah. Ayah 75. God does not eat, whereas Mary and Jesus ate. Therefore, they cannot be God, because God doesn't eat. Surah 5, Ayah 116, where God says to Issa, is it true that you and your mother are to be worshipped as God? Which confuses the Trinity, because it's including Mary in the Trinity. And then Surah 6, Ayah 101, which starts from the premise that, and says very clearly that God has no wife, no consort. And you can then go back to Surah 4, Ayah 171, which says, Say not three, for God is one, and he has no son. So God has no son, and he certainly is in three, God is one. So you can see, if you look at these, what I've given about five, six verses right there in a row. Surah 572, Surah 575, Surah 5, uh, 116, Surah 6, Ayah 101, and Surah 4, Ayah 171. Those five verses right there confront everything I know about my Lord Jesus Christ. But they have nothing to do with the Bible, because in every case, they're incorrect. Let's just go right through them. Is Jesus the partner of God? Absolutely not. He is God, has always been God, eternally was there at the creation. He is the one that created all of the heavens and earth with God and will be there at the very end. So he's not a partner of God. That's the whole triune concept that Muslims get confused by. And the reason why that is because they have a Sabellian view of God. Their view is that God is totally other and he's distinct way up Same. in wherever he exists. But he cannot, because he's totally other, he cannot enter his own creation. And if he does enter his own creation, he is comes with all of himself into creation. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is on earth in the form of Jesus Christ. That's what they think we're saying. And we're not saying that. He's but not, then who spoke to him from the clouds? Who rested upon him? Exactly. They asked this question, if Jesus was on earth, who was running the universe while he was down here? Without yeah. even thinking through, even the question doesn't make sense because you can run the universe from anywhere. It doesn't mean you don't have to be in heaven to run it. You, if you're mm -hmm. God, you can run it from your room or right here where I'm staying. Yeah. But that's not the question. What they're saying is why all of God is in God. God, Father, and all three persons Trinity are there in God. We would never suggest that because, as you just said, uh, when, when, when uh, Moses 
there in Exodus 33, says, I want to see God. And yet he's talking to God face to face. And yet 11 verses later, God says, well, he's going to come down. He's going to put you in the cleft of the rock so that he goes behind you because nobody can be, uh, see God face to face and live. Well, then he's, he's, they're talking to God face to face. So that's already showing that there's two different persons of the God in, in Exodus 33. Yes, the pre-incarnate Christ, yeah. Exactly. And there's exact, example, example, right through the Old Testament and also the New Testament. The support Isaiah, them. yeah. Yeah, so the partner of God is already a misnomer. It is an error. The next one that God can't eat. If God can't eat, I remember when I talked to Muslims on this, they say God can't eat. I said, well, that's interesting. Uh, I can eat. You're saying your God can't eat? Get a bigger God. I can do something your God can't do? Proving to me if God can't eat, then what kind of God is he? And I would like to know if they believe they, that they follow the God of Abraham, I would like to, why don't they ask Abraham, who was with Abraham re eating in front of the tent of Mamre? That was God that was eating. Abraham would have told him that God can eat because he was right there in the presence of God eating. He gave him the food. So mm -hmm. obviously if God can't eat, then they're not part of the Abrahamic, uh, Abrahamic uh, covenant. The other one, chapter 5, verse 1 and 1, 6. I've already said the problem with that. Um, confusing Mary and putting her into the Trinity such, suggests to me that wherever they got their story about Jesus, Issa, was not from the Bible and certainly not from Orthodox Christians. It looks like they got it from the Gnostics, which is true. The Gnostics, uh, there were some Gnostics, there were some heresies that existed. The Coloridians is one of them who did believe that Mary was part of the Trinity. So it looks like, like much of the Quran is borrowed, they borrowed this idea. And if they, and then chapter six, verse one hundred one, that God cannot have a wife. Here, here's an irony. If that is so, let's look at the historical Allah. Allah historically is not it is not Islamic. He is Nabataean. And if you go yeah. to Petra, if you low, you will see that the Nabataean, the senior god of the Nabataeans, is named Dushara. And there is a temple to Dushara there in Petra. Now Dushara has a title called the god. That's Ilaha. Ilaha is the title for Dushara. The the, uh, the senior god of the Nabataeans. What's interesting is that Dushara also has a wife. Her name is oh. Al-Uzza. Al-Uzza like is a name. Hero to his use kind Hold of. Hold on, we're not stopped yet. Yep. Al-Uzza has a title as well. Her name is Alat, which is the feminine form of Allah. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, is she, she one of the three cranes? The, um, <laughs> is she one of those three. that remember the three... Yeah, a lot. 53, verse 19 and 20. That's yeah. called the satanic verses. The yes. satanic verses mentions the two names of the wife of Allah. Allah Uzza and Al-At is the wife of Dushara, who is generically titled Allah. I which didn't know then, that. Which means yeah. that Allah of the Quran has a wife, doesn't he? Ooh, do, 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 do. Don't tell everybody. <laughs> I'm just telling everybody, one. and I'm telling you, okay, this is all going over yeah. the, the internet now. But this is, this is when you look at the, that's why it's important that we do look at the Quran historically. You brought that up a few minutes ago. We need to look at the Issa of the, of the history. When you look at the Issa of history, not only is Issa not uh, the name for Jesus in Arabic. Did you not know this? The name for Jesus in Arabic has always been Yeshua which is the same yes. as yes, yes in Hebrew. Yeah. Issa is not an Arabic word. I think it's Syrian. E Esau, it's I think. Syriac. It's it comes from Esau yeah. in Syriac, where all these stories about Issa come from. And when you borrow the story, you borrow the name. That's why they borrowed the name Issa. Because when you take Esau and put it into Arabic, it becomes Issa. So not only have they got the wrong historical th Jesus, they've also got the wrong theology about Jesus. More than that, they're attacking Jesus on areas that I don't even recognize. You cannot say that he's the partner of God. He's not. You cannot say that, that he cannot eat. Of course God can eat. And Mary should not be part of the Trinity. And if you're going to start saying that he can't have a wife, then you're going to have to throw out Allah. Because Allah has a wife. Her name is Allah. And then fifthly, chapter 4, verse 171, which attacks the Trinity, attacks his divinity, and attacks his sonship. In all three things, it is a misnomer. Because our Trinity is not the Trinity they have in 5116. So throw that out. As far as in sonship, he is not the biological son of God. But even Islam has a problem with this because they do believe that God can have a biological son in chapter 39, verse 4. In chapter 39 of the Quran, verse 4, it says, if Allah so had wished it, he could have a son. Now, throw that right back on the Muslims. How can Allah he have a son? Have, he just doesn't have a girlfriend to facilitate this. So, 
Never mind, Ella. Hey, I would just throw that right back on the Muslim and say, now you tell me how he can have a biological son. You always ask me that. We don't believe he had a biological son. Jesus is not the biological son of God. He no, is he's God. the eternal son, begotten. Yeah. He inherits the everything that the Father inherits, which means he inherits his divinity. Uh, which means yeah. when he says, I am the son of God, he is saying, I am the same as the Father. We are both one. We are yeah. both divine. That's a divine claim, and that's why Muslims should get angry with that term, because what it's saying is, I am God, which they always ask where Jesus said that. There he does, every time he said, I'm yeah. the son of God. So in all cases, I would say the Issa of the Quran is not Jesus. The name is wrong, the historical figure is wrong, the context is wrong, what he does in the Quran is wrong, he does not do those miracles as a child, and he deny his divinity. And then most, and this I'm going to say this to last, the worst thing about the Issa of the Quran is he doesn't die on the cross. In chapter 4, verse 157. Sure. If he yeah. does not die on the cross, I'm damned. And we might as well throw the Bible away and throw all of our faith away because everything is predicated on that death and resurrection. If mm. God did not die and rise again, then we might as well go home. Everything we're saying is foolish. And yeah. when you take one verse, just one verse in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 157, and throw that out, well, then you throw it out my God. You throw it out my Jesus. You throw, I want nothing to do with that Issa. I want nothing to do with that God. So do we share the same Issa? Is Issa the same as Jesus? Absolutely not. And so that's why I say I do not want anything to do with Issa. I want everything to do with Yeshua. Come back to the real Jesus, the Arabic Jesus, the Arabic name for Jesus, not the Arabic Jesus, the Arabic name for Jesus, the real name for Jesus that's missing in this book, proving to me again that they don't have the right Jesus. <laughs>